Welcome to Fallout 76, this is Jim. In this video we're going to take a look at completing daily challenges for today, Tuesday, January the 9th, 2024. Let's take a look at and see what we got for today. Alright, we got some good ones here. Now I am going to be using a booster here, so you will see the score kind of boost up a little bit. Alright, let's back back out here. Open it back up. There we go. All right. Now, I have many videos on my channel that will help you guys out. I'll give you different ideas, different locations, easy areas, hard areas that were there. If you're a brand spanking new player, you're a returning player, or even an experienced player, if there's a particular daily or weekly challenge that's giving you a hard time or trouble, I'm sure you'll find a video on my channel that will help you. I try to keep my videos updated as I possibly can. And sometimes you guys help me out with that, which is greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and do some stuff here in our camp. Looks like we can. Let's do this one here. Drink tea one. So I have a couple of videos that are showing you a great spot where you can craft tea. And it's right here in good old Flatwoods. But if you're uh, playing the game today and on the season 15 scoreboard... Probably a quarter of the way through the game, everyone will get this company tea machine, okay? Everyone. And once when you claim that, all you gotta do is you go to your camp and you open up your build menu, you go down here to resources. Okay? And there'll be the company tea machine will pop up right there. Now I made a video on this uh, machine when it first came out. When I first unlocked it, I guess I should say. Okay. It's very handy to have. You guys know I'm a huge fan of camp resources. Okay. So here is my company team machine. Okay. I got five of them. Let's go ahead and open up my pip boy. Let's go ahead and drink a company tea. Done. Drink tea one for one. Just like that, guys. Just like that. So this daily should be very easy for everyone to do. If you're playing right now, everyone should have gotten this company team machine, okay? What's next here, Jim? Collect Radaway or Rad X5, okay? So, Radaway, Rad X, ghouls are a good source of Radaway and Rad X. Uh, usually, areas where there's human enemies, such as cultists and blood eagles, there'll be Radaway and Rad X there as well. Um, now, if you have a full Radaway or a full Rad X on your person, you can actually craft diluted versions of that and it will count. Okay. So let's go ahead. We'll go here to our uh, camera. How you doing, Beckett? Okay. We'll go here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know there's a big disaster going on outside there, but uh, you go to your chemistry workstation here. <laughs> you go down here to healing. Okay. And slide it down. So there's Radaway right diluted times two. Now, all it costs is two purified water, one rat away. So, one rat away, one full one will give you two diluted. Let's go ahead and craft one. Okay. So, two of five. Let's craft another one. Four of five. And we'll craft another one to finish it off. This one here you can do right in your camp. We're just doing daily, weekly challenges. Okay. Uh, something that will help out with that is a perk card if you like. It'll be under uh, luck. And it'll be called super duper. You can use this perk card as well if you like. I don't really have much luck using super duper when crafting chems myself. But some people said that they have had some luck. So FYI on that. Okay, what's next Jim? All right, let's go ahead. We're going to collect any flavor of Nuka-Cola 5. So you guys hear me talk about this many a times. You'll find Nuka-Cola all over the wasteland. And you guys know that I'm a huge fan of the Nuka-Cola Collectron. This is the OG one I got like a long time ago. It's the red and yellow. I believe you can buy it from Samuel and Foundation if you're a cautious with the settlers for 1750 gold bullion. Okay. And as you can see, he even sells the, or not sells, he even collects the, uh, the rare ones like cranberry and orange and grape. Okay, great spot. 
Having these, having at least one Nuka-Cola Collectron station in one of your camps is well worth it. Worth its weight in gold, okay? Um, now, there's another version of that if you're around during Season 11. Of course, Camp Resources, because it's a Collectron. So this is the uh, the OG one here, I like to call it. The other one was in Season 11. It was this one here, the uh, Nuka-Cola Quantum. Same deal, we'll collect Nuka-Cola products, but... I find this guy here will also collect purified water, nuclear waste, okay, in addition to bottles, so FYI on that. That's why I kind of stick with the uh, the red and yellow OG one myself. Now, if for some reason you don't have the Nuka-Cola Collectron, okay, you can go around the waste and look for Nuka-Cola. And one of the best spots, of course, is right down here in good old Nuka World on tour. Let's go ahead and fast travel. It's a free fast travel. try to give you guys as many options as possible so when you spawn in you'll spawn in right here sometimes there'll be the odd uh, nuka cola right here okay on these tables what you can do you can make your way around here and there'll be a nuka cola machine you can open up there'll be some nuka cola in here let's go ahead and grab one now i'm on a uh, private server so you guys know i collect nuka colas and uh, so it's not going to affect anyone else because I'm on a private server. Then you make it a way up here where there is seismic activity event that will happen. And there will also be Nuka Colas up here that you can grab. Sometimes they're bottles. I can get in here. Alright, so let's grab this guy. Let's grab this guy. Grab that guy. Nice, nice. Doing good here. Doing really good. Just check in here. Just a bunch of empty bottles. I'll check the next one. Sometimes there'll be one around the corner. Sometimes there'll be some on this table here as well. I don't know. It's, it's stuck there for some reason. Another bother. Just impact. Let's grab that bad boy. Uh, then we'll go along here. Oh, there's one right there. Nice. There we go. Collect any flavor, Nuka-Cola 5 for 5. Usually in this section up here will be mainly uh, Nuka-Cola Classic, okay, and Nuka-Cola Cherry, FYI. Uh, there'll also be some Nuka-Cola in this machine here, which there is. Nice, nice. We'll grab him too. Why not, Jim? Why not, old pal? And then, um, if you don't have much luck there, I'll give you guys another option. There'll be Nuka-Cola vending machines down here, but you'll have to pay for the Nuka-Cola. Something very similar to Bubbles in the White Spring uh, Refuge upstairs, right? In a little store area, you could buy Nuka-Cola off of Bubbles. All right, so here is the uh, Nuka-Cola vending machines here. Again, you'll have to buy them, but you can buy them. It's the same thing as collecting them, okay? FYI on that. So you can come down here and collect five Nuka-Colas, 19 caps each, okay? Yeah, that's, that's always an option for you, okay? All right, so that's, that's that one. That's that one. What's next here, Jim? What else can we do here, old pal? Let's go ahead and pick a lock one. So I usually like to kind of choose areas. There's many places where you can pick a lock, but I like to pick a lock for these videos, areas where it's level zero requirement, okay? Uh, one such spot is right here at the old Gilman Lumber Mill. Now this has been taken over by the responders. It's in the forest, low-level area. In, in around the Gilman Lumber Mill, there's no enemies around because the responders are here now. And what you want to do is just jump over this fence. You go right in here, and there'll be this uh, footlocker here. So see there, requirement skill, level zero. The reason why I like to do that Okay, is because you don't need to have a perk card. So if you're brand spanking new to the game, let's say you don't have a pick lock perk card under perception, okay, then you, you don't need one for level zero. Okay, uh, it shows auto unlock for me because I have a legendary perk card called Master Infiltrator Two Star. Auto unlock skill one terminals and locks okay. plus three lock pick and hacking skills. Once when you get into legendary perk cards, I highly recommend this bad boy. It just saves a lot of time and uh makes the game a little bit better that way there you don't have to switch your perk cards around for perception for pick lock 
and intelligence for hacking uh, terminals, FYI. Let's go ahead, unlock this guy. Nice, done. Just like that. Pick a lock one for one. Easy. Easy, easy again. Level zero requirement. Okay. What's next, Jim? Let's go ahead and collect a teapot too. So I made a video on this a little while back. I would say five or six months ago. I took you right down here to Appalachian Antiques, but that's only good for maybe one or two teapots down there. Uh, I made a video there last week. It was part of the daily. And uh, I took you up here to the Palace of the Winding Path. You could check out that, that video if you'd like. There was a great one little location inside that main building. You could pick up seven teapots there. You can fill your boots. A uh, real good spot for teapots. Uh, for this particular daily challenge video, I'm going to take you to the one and only giant teapot, which is right down here. Let's go ahead and fast travel down here. Now, in my video, I like to show you guys many locations, not just one or two. I like to show as many locations as I, as I can. And that's mainly for the people who don't like the fast travel, who like to physically walk, or don't have the caps to fast travel, just to give you guys options, okay? That's what I try to do in my videos. Alright, so let's go to the giant teapot here. There will be the, maybe the odd mongrel or the odd um, insect around, FYI. Uh, so there's a teapot right here. It's a house teapot. Okay, nice, nice. And I think that's all there usually is in here. It's just the one house teapot. So I haven't been here in a while. Nice little bowler hat for someone that's new. And then what you want to do, make your way down to the house here. There'll be a couple more teapots in here. So we picked up a house teapot. And then there's this teapot should be... Oh, right here. So this is the tea, one of the type of teapots you'll find at the Palace of the Winding Path. The video I made last week. Let's go ahead and pick him up. Nice. Got the teapot two for two. Awesome. There's another teapot there we could have picked up. We'll save him for later. Only pick up what you need, I always say, because you just never know. Because this uh, might pop up again. And it's always good. Unless you plan on resetting the game by picking up, you know, 250 items. You know what I mean? It's, just, it's best just to... Pick up what you need, and that way then the next day or the day after you can keep on rolling with the old daily quests. Okay, what's next, Jim? We're on a roll here. Let's go ahead, deal a critical hit to an enemy five, okay? So an enemy can be any enemy at all. Uh, creatures, human, robot, whatever, okay? Let's go to a good spot here. We'll start off down here, the good old Somerville docks. One of my favorite places to go. Where I can demonstrate this. Okay. So what you want to do, you can pick your favorite weapon. Now some weapons, depending on uh, the legendary effect you might have on it. Some weapons are better for critical hits. Meaning that the uh, critical hit meter will fill up a lot faster. Now I have a legendary weapon that I have in my stash box. It only takes two shots. In order to fill the meter, uh, most of my other weapons will usually take about three to four shots to fill the critical meter, and you'll see what I mean here in a second. All right, so you see how I have uh, in vats here, okay? And you see the crit meter in the middle. So that crit meter is full, and we know it's full because if you see the bottom of the screen, see how it says critical and it has that Y flashing? So it's Y for me because I'm on Xbox. So whatever button that is for you, it'll be flashing once that meter is full. Another way you know the meter is full is it'll make like a bloop sound kind of thing without you having to look for that meter in case you're, you know, you're busy looking at her stuff on the screen, depending on how big your screen is. Okay. But that audible sound will tell you when your crit meter is full as well. Now to perform a critical hot, a shot, I always recommend to go for the torso because you can miss on a critical hit and it'll be wasted. So to perform a critical hit, you have to hit the fire button, whatever button it is for you, and that critical button at the same time. So for me, it's RT and Y. I have to hit those buttons at the same time to perform a critical hit. So let's go ahead. We'll do it at the same time. There we go. Now it got two for five for me, and you might be wondering why. 
It's because this weapon I have here is a two shot. So we saw that. So that's uh, we. He's got a little sliver left. So you see the crit meter. I shoot him. See how it kind of fills up a little bit. That was the level one, Jim. See how it filled up a little bit there in the crit meter? I shoot this guy. See how the crit meter is filling up? It's got to be in vats. Okay, so you hear that sound, that blip sound? So that's how I know without me having to, you know, go vats. That's how I know that it's full. Okay, let's get this uh, rad rat pup. So that one didn't count. And I could have missed. We'll see here the next enemy that pops up. So having a two shot. And having a two shot weapon with a legendary effect that will help you with critical hits. You'll be going through critical hits in no time at all. Okay, so, so it's still full. We didn't waste it. Let's get that red roach up there. Nice. Get this uh, scorched in here. <laughs> okay. Let's lock and load, Jeb. Let's lock and load, old pal. Hi. I see you there. I do. Here, see, I see you. Do you see me? Alright, so, we didn't hear the audible alarm, but we know that we can perform critical hit because how that critical is flashing down below, you see it? Let's do it again. Nice. So that one didn't count. Let's see if it was wasted. We'll know with the next enemy if it was wasted or not. If it was wasted, the critical meter will be down to zero. And sometimes that will happen, so FYI on that. Nope, we didn't waste it, so let's try it again. There we go. Easy, easy. That's definitely the best way I can explain it to you guys, how to perform critical hits. Always down for a good whiskey. All the wood's uh, blocking it. How you doing? Alright, see that sound, so we're good. See a critical strike on Scorch Wanderer? See that on top uh, left hand corner of the screen? That's another way you know. So there we go. It's that one. Uh, what's next, Jim? What's next? Say the best for last. <laughs> Kill legendary enemy one. So any legendary enemy will do one star, two star, three stars. Okay. Doesn't matter. Now in the ideal conditions. If you get an event up here by Tyler County Fairgrounds called leader of the pack. That is probably the best hands down way to get a legendary enemy. Because there'll be three packs. And each pack will be led by a wolf that's a legendary. Okay, that's probably the best. Uh, eviction Notice is another good one as well, but Eviction Notice is pretty hard. I wouldn't really uh, tackle that on your own. <laughs> best to have other people with you. Uh, sometimes you'll come across an event wandering around the map called a Horde. The Horde leader will also be a legendary enemy as well. Uh, I've also brought you guys down here to the Charleston Capitol building. And a lot of times there'll be a ghoul inside there that will be a legendary as well. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to server hop. And I'm going to go to a public server. Whereas there's maybe more events. And we're going to see if we can uh, see one of those events like leader of the pack will pop up I'm hoping when you're on a private server there's not many events that will pop up for you it's better just to go to uh, when you're doing events to go to a public server okay 
We're on a public server there now. Let's pop up here. Okay, we don't see it here. What's this? Okay, Wolf Horde. So there we go. Let's go ahead to the Wolf Horde. We'll join that event. And as mentioned, the Wolf Horde boss will be a legendary or whatever boss. All right, so there's our Wolf Horde boss over there. Let's get her sneak on here. He's inside the bus. Here. Let's try and lock onto him here. How you doing there, bud? He's right there. Oh, he's not legendary this time. The event's complete, though. That is so strange. I wonder if that's something that they fixed in December. So what will happen is when you do the horde bot, the hordes, uh, the boss will always be a legendary. That's the first time that I've ever seen that. All right, let's continue on here, Jim. Right on. Thanks, bud. <laughs> I was gonna say I was excited there for a second. All right. <laughs> That's so odd. All right, let's go down here to the good old Charleston Capitol building. And uh, we'll go through that building, see if we can find a legendary enemy. Now, I don't know what the spawn rates are for enemies being legendaries compared to not. But uh, I find it's totally random myself personally some people might have calculated it out I'm not sure but I find that's very random here in Charleston we're at the old DMV building Charleston Capitol building let's go inside here now again this particular building is level 50 plus but uh, if you know what you're doing like if you're a returning player starting over again you know how to deal with the ghouls because how they get in your face. You won't have an issue. Just bring a bring a good weapon with you. Bring a friend. Huh. Looking for a legendary enemy here. We'll kill these guys as we go. Might as well, right? He, uh... Oh, he's up there. thought he went outside of the building for a second. Right away, see. Ghoul's great spot for her to get right away in. Rad X. It's not too bad in here, you know. It's um, if you do it right, you know. If you want to run through the place and get all their attention, and you're a new player, it's a good way to get yourself killed. Unless you have, like, an extremely good weapon. But if you do it, you know, like this, shouldn't be a problem. I usually find the legendaries are usually upstairs or downstairs. I know the last time I came here, I couldn't find a legendary enemy in about five tries. 
But you never know. Just never know with this game. Another rat away. Rad X. So as I said, Google's a good way to get rat away and rat X. Good sources. Probably one of the best reliable sources. so much just amazing really makes my day killing these guys I like the fair play there patty huh uh oh he's moonwalking there when they start moonwalking that's how you know they're gonna come for you gonna re-roll this guy and I may still re-roll him but uh, I haven't done I haven't done this in a video in a while so I like to kind of show you guys some spots but leader of the pack is probably your best bang for your buck Coming here is your, I would say your last resource. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes there'll be a legendary, one of these guys. No. All right. Uh, usually the guy down the end here will be a Legendary. Oh. That's unfortunate. Some uh, fellow some surprise though that uh, that uh, Wolf Horde, the boss wasn't legendary. That's uh, I'm surprised by that. I'm hoping they didn't uh, do something to that. But you never know. They could have. Now, usually one of these guys here will be legendary as well. One of the four that will spawn down here. No. Ah, uh, well. Is what it is, I guess, right? check around here um i don't really get a whole lot of legendary enemies up here guided meditation personally um even during mutate events i don't get very many up there either let's uh server hop again i really want that uh, leader of the pack to pop up Alright. Death Blossoms. 
Ben is a trap. Feral Ghoul Horde. Okay, we could try this. Another Horde. Hopefully, it'll be a uh, legendary boss this time. I don't know what happened. All right, quest started. Open up the map here. So, when it gets to this one here, it'll show you some locations. Now, we'll have to pick the best location where we know there's going to be ghouls. Greg's Mine Supply, that's where we know where ghouls are at. So let's go ahead, we'll fast travel over there. You just have a higher chance of uh, getting ghouls in a spot that you know are spawning. In this case, where the circles are. And now the four or five locations, just pick the best spot that you know that that particular horde type will be best way I can explain it okay so there's the little circle on the map now sometimes they're scorched down here as well but it'll tell us if they're around or not if this is the location or not so uh... oh hi This is not the source of the Feral Ghoul Horde. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's pop over here to the Relay Tower. We maybe could have done that one first. I haven't been down here in a while. Greg's Mining Supply. Wow. It's been a long time. Alright, just follow the circle, get within that area, and you'll know right off if it's the area or not. Gotta be careful of the turrets. Oh, there we go. All oh, super mutants, okay. So this is not the area as well. Let's keep going. Oh, what's this up here? Lady Janet soft serve. Let's go ahead and pop up there. I think there are ghouls up here. Let's go up here. been a while but uh, I believe there are ghouls up here there can be ghouls yep feral ghoul right there perfect all right the boss will show up oh there's a whole bunch of them in there look at that yep okay there we go so there's the, the boss inside there hopefully he's a, a legendary Yeah, there he's right there. So there's our boss. Kill legendary enemy one for one. That's what I would recommend doing. I don't know why that wolf boss wasn't uh, wasn't a legendary. I have no idea. He was not the boss. So that's interesting. That's interesting for sure. Holy jeepers! <laughs> Look at these cats! Wow, that's a lot of ghouls, man. Look at these guys. <laughs> Burp. Oh, so there's a three star. So there's the boss there. He's a three star legendary and he's booking her. Look at him go. So he was the boss. Three star legendary. Got him. So that's good. So actually this one here actually had a couple legendaries in it. You don't usually see that very often, but uh, maybe they're making up for that wolf. But yeah, there you go. Horde bosses, if you can find them on the map, server hop, they do pop up. Oh, there he is there. Just what I always wanted. Bloodied Walking Cane, three star. Thanks. <laughs> I can't believe the ghouls that were in here. That's quite something, man. Wow. That's a lot of ghouls in this one little area. Oh, get over here. Wow. 
<laughs> love it. Totally love it. So there you go, guys. Just to give you guys some options. Let's take care of these cats here before they come over here and tear my face off. Yeah. Anyone else? Oi. Oh. And when it comes down to the hordes, or, or leader of the pack, best to kill the boss first or they just keep spawning in enemies, okay? FYI on that as well. We are done. We're also overweight. Took a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but I haven't done this one in a daily challenge video for some time, so I wanted to kind of include it this time and give you guys some good options. Uh, some of you might re-roll it, that's fine if you do, but... At least you'll have a couple options if you want to try it out if you have the time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and share when you have the chance. It really helps me out. I'd like to thank my channel members, Artistically Arranged, Boogaloo Bronson, Michael Edwards, Nigel Whiffen, Heather, White Tribe. Thank you all so very much. And I hope you all have a nice day.